My name is Alana McLaughlin. I am only 13. <laughs> I am an eighth grader at John Early Middle and I play trumpet, piano. I was a cheerleader for two years. This was my last season, but I'll play cheer next year. I ran track. I've done multiple, I'm, I'm a part of multiple organizations such as, well, I'm an alumna of the Junior National Young Leaders Conference. Mm. Every summer I go to camp at uh, Western Kentucky University's Center for Gifted Studies. They have camps such as SCATS, which is the summer camp for academically talented students, and VAMPI, which is the summer camp for verbally and mathematically precocious youth. Mm -hmm. I have always wanted to make a difference in the world. And growing up as a minority and as and, and, and growing up in a race that is so powerful yet so overlooked, it's always been hard for me to do that. And so this is kind of like my outlet to share information and to bring awareness to the things that you wouldn't usually hear. And it's interesting to see this little black girl on TV just talking about these things because that's not something you see every day. Like I said, we're an amazing race that's just constantly overlooked. And we have so much power and knowledge and understanding to give. It's just... We're overlooked and so I use the show as my outlet to share information and I've been doing this for this is uh what month is this, this is May in December it'll be my eighth year doing this and so this is my biggest pastime. <laughs> and so Alana in a real sense this is a topic that you've given some thought to and I think that all of the topics that you've already given us dealing with on this level have been very, very interesting as well as very, very informative kinds of uh, topics. Let's start off by allowing you during the uh, remaining part of this first segment to uh, sort of lay the foundation as to why you would like to uh, talk about uh, uh, Islamic, uh, in Islam in uh, America and, and give our audience some idea in terms of what Islam is all about. Well, in the, first sub, in the first segment, I'm really going to go into vocabulary, so before, a couple of days ago, I had no idea what anti-Islamic sentiment was. So we're going to break down the words and basically explain it so that the viewers will have a better knowledge of what we're talking about. First of all, sentiment is like a good feeling and et cetera, and et cetera. Think sentimental. Anti-sentiment -sen is the exact opposite. It's negative feelings. So think... Mm, uh, Jim Crow laws were anti-sentimental towards blacks. That's why you can remember that. Islam is a religion. People always confuse Muslims. Okay, Islam is the religion and Muslims follow that. Just think uh, Christians follow Christianity. It is a very, very common misconception that A, Muslims are race, that B, Islam is the people that follow Muslims. It's the complete opposite. Islam is a monotheistic and Abrahamic religion that is based on the verbatim word of God, which they know as the Quran. The Quran is the equivalent of the Bible in Christianity. I'm making inferences like this because, you know, the, a lot of people in America are Christian. So that's like a, just something they can understand. Anyway. The Quran is this, basically their holy word and the complete um, the main purpose of the world for Islam is to follow God. And to obey God. And so that's a little overview of Islam and Muslims, the people who follow Islam. And so viewers will have a better understanding of what we're talking about in the next two subjects where we talk about anti-Islamic sentiment and how that affects the new generations. Mm -hmm. Very good. And so uh, what we'll do, we'll take this uh, first commercial break after you've given us sort of a foundation for the discussion of Islamic, anti-Islamic sentiment in the uh, United States. We'll come back during the second segment to get into some cases dealing with uh, some of the problems that we're dealing with now. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Uh, I was trying to catch up with this. This is my time. Can we here. scoot that over a little bit so I can see it out the corner of my eye? Because I'm looking right here. Actually, see, the thing is, you um, have to be like. Yeah, okay, well, that's better anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, and so, Lana, the second segment we're going to yeah. talk about, we're talking about anti Islamic sentiment in yeah. the United States. That'll be the introduction, and then we're 
talking to you and then uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to talk about what? I mean, how you want to uh, introduce this topic? Is that what you want to do? Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a recap of the first subject, like the vocabulary mm -hmm. and stuff, mm -hmm. and just get into what it is. Okay, very good. And this whole segment is going to be what it is, and the third segment will be how it affects my generation mm -hmm. and well, this social media is, and stuff like that. It's eight minutes of what it is. This is what you think you can I talk know. about for eight minutes? Yeah, I can talk about what it is for eight minutes. Yeah, well, I can talk about what it is for ten minutes. I can talk about what well, it just, is for just, eight just, just talk about it for eight minutes, okay? Just, I mean, that'll, be, that'll be appropriate. I like okay. those reviews that you give too, in order to bring the audience in. Too. Huh. Thank you. you. <laughs> oh, when we do it. You gotta go like this, Paul. Mm -hmm. You gotta go like, pew. like, gotta blow okay, up here. Come on. Seven minutes and fifty-five seconds, right, right there. Mm -hmm. That's what. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. <coughs> Excuse me. The topic is anti-Islamic sentiment in the United States. And we have to uh, talk about anti-Islamic sentiment in the United States, Alana McLaughlin. Now, Alana, you've given me some information in reference to your background, your education, and uh, you've touched, <coughs> excuse me, upon some aspects of uh, Islamic sentiment. But let's pick up at this point and, and, and talk about as Islamic sentiment in the United States. Well, if you're just tuning in, my name is Alana McLaughlin, and I gave a little background about me. Also, in the first segment, I talked about vocabulary and key terms that you're going to need to know the definitions of to be able to fully take away everything from the show today. I talked about, the, basically, the whole thing of the show is talking about and analyzing, kind of picking apart the anti-Semitic um, feeling, anti-Islamic, <laughs> of Islam, I'm sorry. Um, and so basically I talk about anti-sentiment and so think, just think the word sentiment is like good feelings and et cetera, think sentimental. And then think of anti-sentiment sentiment as the complete opposite. And then anti-sentimental feelings toward Islam or the religion. And I talked about Islam, which is a monotheistic religion. It goes by the Quran, which is the equivalent of the Bible in Christianity. It's their holy word, and they believe it is the verbatim word by God. And so I talked about what Islam is, and I talked about a few common misconceptions, the most popular being that Muslim is a religion and that Islamic people are the people that follow Muslims, which is totally wrong. <laughs> Muslims are the people that follow Islam. They, they're the equivalent, like this is Christians and this is Christianity and they follow that. And so I talked about those misconceptions, but now I'm going to talk about the anti-sentimental anti feelings toward Muslims in the United States. Now, I'm pr I, I think that you've, in, you've probably encountered some anti-sentimental feelings, but you've probably just not seen that they were anti-sentimental. Like, for instance, on social media, I always see jokes of... Um, People making fun of uh, Muslims for, say, how they dress or the Quran or something, just ma making wisecracks about mm -hmm. that. And people laugh or repost it and they encourage it, but they don't really see how hurt, how, I mean, how <laughs> painful that would be to see on your timeline. And so I just think that anti sentimental feelings, they really um, say the political election of 2016 Donald Trump for instance he's um widely known for wanting to uh create a wall to keep out immigrants and etc cetera, etc cetera. and he's also voiced so many other opinions that I don't want to get into because that's a show in itself <laughs> and so also there are so many stereotypes that come from anti-sentimental feelings toward Islamic people and some aren't even stereotypes like for instance I was flying to Washington DC by myself 
or no, I was flying from DC to Nashville and there was a man behind me and I think that he was a Muslim. Well, he had a Quran in his hand and we were in line trying to go through TSA. And so I went through and got my stuff and I sat waiting for the rest of the group that I was with to get ready to board a plane. And they were just giving him the hardest time trying to go through security. And they were just make doing unnecessary things that were just like they made him open up his Quran. They had to like flip through it and like put it through the machine. Like that's extra. I was carrying bags and stuff. And they didn't do half as much stuff to me as they did to him. And I'm just sitting here thinking like, wow, this is the country we live in. And other people were just looking. And I saw a couple teenagers just laughing. I'm like, this is... Are you kidding me? This is actually happening. And it, it caught me off guard because I've always heard about stories like that, but I've never seen anything like that firsthand. And it was, I thought about that the whole plane ride home. And I was just like, wow. And so we see things like this. And for instance, <coughs> we see things like this and we don't ever take a stand. Now, there are some brave souls who do, but for the most part, people don't. And another thing that really, really irritates me, people are always talking about ISIS, which is a terrorist group that needs to be stopped ASAP. The biggest thing that irks me is people who think that all followers of Islam are part of ISIS. Mm -hmm. That is not what's going on at all. That's like saying, um, that's like saying all people who listen to hip hop are drug dealers or all people listening to soul are hippies. You, you can't judge an entire race or group or a party by one thought. Like, I've, I grew up in a Democratic household, but I can tell you that not all Democrats hate gays or whatever or whatever. And I can tell you that all, not all Democrats hate Republicans. It's just I hate stereotypes like that. And I hate when people try to classify large groups by one thing that just just so happens to be popular among that group of people. Like, yes, a lot of people in the world like fried chicken. Yes, a lot of black people like fried chicken. Not all black people like fried chicken. And I wish people would get that through their heads. Well, and Lana, <laughs> when, you, when you see people uh, thinking in terms of uh, uh, animosity toward these various groups. We, we've got about two minutes in this segment. When you see people thinking about the animosity toward various groups, uh, to put it within uh, the African American context, and you think in terms of uh, slavery, the Civil War, and then the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, uh, are you contending, or are you saying that all of these groups, no matter what group they might, uh, what uh, religion they might belong to, have the same constitutional and civil rights uh, liberties. Is that what we're saying here? Everybody deserves a chance at life. Everybody deserves a chance to be able to walk through TSA without being double checked just because of the traditional dress that they're wearing. Everyone deserves a chance to be able to walk freely down the street without being called ISIS. Every black woman deserves the right to walk down the street without being called a, I don't know if I can say that on TV. No, but I'm don't not going say to. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> Yeah, um, uh -huh. <laughs> I, and every white person deserves not to be able to be labeled as every white Southern person des deserves not to be able to call to be called KKK or say some stupid stereotype like they date their cousins or something. Because I mean, sure, that that may have happened in the South, but you can't classify a whole group of people by that one thing. And that's just that's my biggest issue. And I wish that there were more groups that that we're fighting for the rights of the minorities that people kind of sweep under the rug. Like, for instance, for black people, they have the NAACP, which is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And they fight for our rights, but how many groups do you see? And there are plenty of black rights groups like the Black Panthers and NAACP, et cetera, et cetera. But how many <clears throat> Islamic groups do you see that fight for the rights of Islam? Okay, so what we'll do, we'll take this second commercial break, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. Impact Chair. Mm -hmm. In my own in, in world, world. Uh -huh. like I told you about the airport incident. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> crazy. We were all going through. I was coming back from D.C. Because mm -hmm. I was with the Junior National Young Leaders Conference. Okay, well, let, let's see. We, we say the these like that yeah. all groups deserve uh, civil rights, 13th, 14th, 15th Amendments. That's the right to vote, the right to... Citizenship, right? They're citizenship. citizens. And they, they have vote. the right to vote. And uh, they have uh, the 13th, 14th, and the 15th. And the 13th Amendment is uh, free slavery and no, 14th okay, so Amendment is citizenship. A, 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 a abolished... Abolish slavery. Abolish. <laughs> Abolish. Abolish, Abolish yeah. slavery gave us the right to, to vote and the right to citizenship. That's right. And so... Everybody deserves yeah, well, yeah, their work, Yeah, okay. work it around uh -huh. in there and talk about that. Okay. some of the Needed in there. things that, that make us all alike in spite of what religion or what situation we might find ourselves okay, in. Okay, so <coughs> 13 slavery, 14 vote. Yeah, and 14 citizenship and okay, 15... So Slavery, and, citizen, vote. Yeah, and, and put much information on the importance of mm -hmm. voting, too, because we're in a voting season and whatever, and, the, and et cetera. Don't let Donald Trump. Huh? Yeah, okay. You know, just the, just, that's what I'm, you know, talking about, the basic constitutional rights that have, that have uh, people have. The 13th Amendment black folks had because they were mm -hmm. slaves. In the 14th Amendment, they became citizens, and the 15th Amendment allowed them the right to vote. And now, we, when we talk about voting, this is where... You, it's needed. People like your seconds, huh? people in your situation. <laughs> and, 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 and. Thank you, and welcome back to the uh, final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Alana McLaughlin, and she's given us some information in reference to anti-Islamic sentiment in the United States of America. Now, Lana, you've covered uh, quite a bit of information during the first and second segment. Let's give you the uh, opportunity during the final segment to deal with some of the other aspects of uh, this anti-Islamic sentiment. All right. And so if you're just tuning in in the second segment, I talked about one ex personal experience that I saw anti semitism <laughs> anti sentiment sentiment. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sentiment going on um, towards a man who was carrying a Quran. He had on a traditional dress from uh, some country. I, I'm not quite sure because I haven't really taken any cultural classes. But he was an American. He was carrying a Quran, so I'm going to make an inference that the man was a Muslim. And so we were in, we were kind of walk. Okay, I was in Washington, D.C. So I was at John F. Kennedy Airport, and I was coming, I was trying to go to Nashville. And so I was going through TSA, and he was behind me. And so I got all my stuff packed. I put it in the little cubbies. They put it through. I got my stuff back. It was over with. And I was waiting on the chaperones that I was with to accompany me onto the flight and all that. So I kind of sat down, and I was observing what else was going on at the airport. And I saw TSA kind of giving the man who was behind me a hard time. Like, for instance, they made what they would do. Like, this is his Quran. They would open it and just, like, kind of kind of manhandle it, trying to see if there was anything in there and they were shaking it. Like it, it was, and it didn't look in too great a condition. So it looked like it could have snapped like that. And it was just, they were giving him, they were doing so much extra. And that really just made my blood boil because at that time there wasn't anything I can do because I couldn't go up there because once you go through TSA, you, I couldn't go straight because as he was coming through it, I couldn't go through that line and everything was too busy. So I couldn't really do anything about it except, you know, tell the chaperones I was with and even they expressed their own disgust about it. And that just really made me think, wow, like that's that's something that happens so often, but it's never reported on websites, et cetera. But let that have been any other race getting racially profiled. I promise you it would have been everywhere if that was me. And they were double checking my stuff and asking me stupid stuff like, um, do I live in Chicago or do I do, do I have a father and stupid stereotypical things like that? Trust me, it would have been on News Channel 5 like that. And, or on and, Fox and, and so you, you find that this is quite prevalent. It's quite prevalent in terms of the denial in a real sense of people's constitutional rights. The it is. Citizenship rights and, and, and whatnot. Is that what you're saying here? It is. And that's why I feel like. There are certain political candidates who do not encourage equality. 
I'm not going to go into name dropping or anything, but there are certain candidates that do not support equality. And I f feel like, th though, okay, right now, the two top candidates are Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And that's just, you just really can't fight that. And I feel like, since I'm not old enough to vote, I'm just watching this unfold. And I'm not making any certain choice because my opinion wouldn't really be taken for anything because I can't vote. But I'm watching this unfold and I'm listening to both of their speeches and all and their, their, all the things that they promised to do with America. And I'm just sitting here thinking like, wow, one of these candidates really wants, he wants an America that's, built around him and people who are like him that that one percent and you I, I don't feel like you could really be a president if you don't think about other people because running a country you have to put others before yourself you have you have so, millions of people who are looking up to you who are abiding by your rules and if you exclude them from some of the things a, that's not right, and B, that's dangerous. Lana, in, in, in your category, in, in your age group, I know you're not uh, old enough to vote yet, but do you find that there's any kind of sentiment in reference to what is going on, on a, from a social level, from a religious level, among the people that you meet every day? I mean, is oh, there God, any, yes. any recognition? I see so many sentiment, not even just Islamic. I've, I see so much sentiment towards me <laughs> going to school, from my peers, because I was blessed with a brain, and I've put my brain to use. So I'm in a lot of extracurricular activities that are academic-based. So I've been called things like, um, oh no, I've been told things like, uh, I don't want to be black because uh, all I do is hang around white kids, and uh, I'm so white, and things like that. But the last time I checked, I don't look that so, white. So you think that uh, in, in a real sense that there's quite a bit of uh, really racism in a real sense it's among yeah. uh, people of your age and uh, what are you doing to try to uh, change that uh, in order to make the world that we live in a better world? What, what are you doing and what do you find that some of your peers can do? You know, first of all, what I personally do is I don't feed into it. I'm not going to fight some ignorant child who comes up to me spurring and spitting out a bunch of racial slurs towards me because that's not going to do anything but end in a fight and that's just not what I'm about to do. First of all, I'll commonly ask them, why do you feel the way that you feel about that? And if they have sense enough to give me an answer, I'm not going to bash them for that answer because they probably, because see, racism you're not born racist. You're taught racism. If they're saying all that to me, they probably grew up or in a household or a neighborhood where things like that were just common core. And so I just, well, I asked them, say, let's take, let's make a mock conversation. You're so white. All you do is hang around like it's, well, why do you think that I'm so white? Because um, all you do is hang around like it's, well, it's not necessarily my fault. Say if I'm in a homeroom that's, Basically, in, in a lot of schools, they choose your classes by test scores. And so there will be, say, six teachers that have two advanced, two proficient, um, two basic, and the, or no, or a basic and a below basic. And so it is not my fault that in, say, a certain school, there are a lot of advanced students who just so happen not to be African-American. That's not my doing. And I didn't ask for that to happen. And if I hang around all white kids, I'm truly, I just hang around my homeroom because those are the people that I know. And if they all, or if the majority of them happen to be white or German or Irish or just non-African-American, then that explains why I have so many friends who are not African-American because that's not who I'm in class with. I have plenty of African-American friends. I'm in plenty things where I'm with plenty of African-American people. Like, for instance, when I went to the Junior National Young Leaders Conference, it was a melting pot full of people. Like, there, were, uh, there were so many different races. We even had a girl from Germany come. Like, it was just an awesome thing. And I got to learn about so many different cultures, and it was just 
so eye-opening. And, and, and so, Alana, today what you're saying here is that while there might be anti-sentiment, whether or not only against Islamic, and et cetera, and et cetera, that you believe that everybody ought to try to practice uh, not only love, but recognize that each person has the 13th, 14th, and the 15th Amendment rights, and that all, they ought to be free, and everybody ought to be equal. Is that what we're trying, is that and what you're trying? speaking of those, the 13th Amendment banned slavery, the 14th gave us citizenship, and the 15th Amendment people need to go out and vote. <laughs> that is, it's voting season right now. That is the biggest thing I want to emphasize. If you are strong-willed and you want America to see the light of day, go out and vote. Because, please, I hate when people say, I'm not going to vote, but it'll be the main one sitting around mad when the candidate they didn't want to win ends up winning. You could have prevented that just by voting. So I encourage everybody to go out and vote. I would if I could. And so I'm just really trying to get my peers to go out and vote because I have a lot of friends who can vote and things like that. So I'm encouraging everybody to get okay. out there. Okay. And, and so, Lana, let me uh, thank you during the last uh, half minute that we have here. Uh, dealing with uh, this very, very uh, important subject. Uh, I think that uh, from what we've talked about, our audience has a pretty good idea in terms of how many people see some of the problems and some of the issues that we raise. And of course, let me encourage our audience to tune, again, tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank, thank you, you and, and good, good morning. morning.